the 14th session of the Senate in the first regular session of the 17th Congress is hereby called to order. Senator Emmanuel Mani Pacquiao will lead us in prayer. Please uh, uh, bow down on our head and uh, we will pray to the Lord. Lord God, the Father, creator of heaven and earth, creator of everything in Jesus' name, we thank you and praise you today. Thank you for your goodness, for the inner strength and the courage through the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for the divine wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Lord God, teach us how to humble ourselves before you and before others. Grant us the desire to do what pleases you and guide us into all truth for the glory of your name. Bless all the people who are here today and make us a blessing to others. Thank you for everything what you have done and for what you are about to do in the future of this country. For without you, we are nothing. Thank you, Lord, that you have a good plans for us, plans to prosper us and not to harm us, plans to give us hope in a future. We pray all this in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody say, Amen. Amen. Secretary, please call the roll. Roll call of members, the Honorable Senator Sangara Aquino Binay, Caetano de Lima de Lone Hercito Escudero, Gatsalian Gordon, Honasan, Monteveros, Laxon, Digada, Pacquiao, Pangilinan, Po, Recto, Soto, Trillanes, Villanueva, Villa Suberi, Senate President Pimentel. With 18 senators present, the chair declares the presence of a quorum. Mr. President, I move that we dispense with the reading of the journal of the 13th session, Tuesday, August 23, and consider the same as approved. Before I act on the motion, can I announce that two of our colleagues are celebrating their uh, birthday today. So we better suspend so that we can greet uh, Senator Soto and Senator Pangilinan. Happy birthday. The session is suspended. Thank you, Mr. President. Session is resumed. Thank you, Mr. President. Before the suspension, uh, because of the uh, greetings. Oh, by the way, uh, Mr. President, it's only in the Senate and perhaps uh, in the entire Congress, it's only Senator Pangilinan and I who can greet each other with same to you. Thank you. Mr. President, I uh, call for the previous question. Motion to uh, approve uh, the session of the journal of the yes, 13th sir. session. Before the suspension, there was a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal of the 13th yes, session. Thank you. 
Tuesday, August 23, 2016, and consider the same to be approved. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Thank you, Mr. President. We'd like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Mayor Ezel Villaneva of Calamba Misamis Occidental, accompanied by her husband, Dr. Junjun Villaneva, and also guests of Senator Recto and Senator Bamakino, the uh, first ever Lady Mayor of Tarlac City, Mayor Maria Cristina Angeles, together with Vice Mayor Genaro Mendoza and members of the City Council, Councilors De Los Reyes, Aguas, Quiros, Julazo, Rodriguez, Basangan, and Go, and other uh, municipal officials. Also, we have the Vice Governor of Oriental Mindoro, uh, Vice Governor Homerlito Bonds Dolor. There are also guests of Senator Hontiveros, Honorable Horacio Franco, Provincial Board of the 4th District of Cebu, and Dr. Rene Catan, Cebu Provincial Health Officer. We'd like to greet them. Um, welcome. Welcome to the Senate. Welcome to all our guests. And uh, may we request for a little silence, please? May we ask the Sanjay Times to adjourn the session in the back, Mr. President? We request a little silence, please. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that we proceed with the reference of business. Is there any objection? There being none, the motion is approved. Mr. Secretary. Senate Bill Number 1057. An act making the term of office of the Chairman of the Commission on Higher Education coterminous with the appointing President, amending for the purpose Section 5 of Republic Act Number 7722, otherwise known as the Higher Education Act of 1994, and for other purposes by Senator Aquilino Coco Pimental III. Referred to the Committee on Education, Arts and Culture. 1058. An act removing the allowable systems loss from private utility companies and reducing the cap of recoverable system losses of rural electric cooperatives from 14% to 5%, amending for the purpose Republic Act Number 7832 as amended by Section 43F of Republic Act Number 9136 and Republic Act Number 8424 as amended by Republic Act Number 9337 and for other purposes, Senator Emmanuel Mani Pacquiao. To the Committees on Energy, Public Services, and Ways and Means. 1059, an act providing for the protection of the rights of airline passengers, Senator Emmanuel Mani Pacquiao. To the Committees on Public Services and Finance. 1060, an act penalizing the dissemination of false information as to the presence of bombs, explosives, and other incendiary devices in high density or sensitive places and providing penalties there for Senator Grace Paul. To the Committee on Public Order and Dangerous Drugs. 1061, an act eradicating abusive contractualization practices and penalizing employers and contractors who commit such abuses by amending for this purpose Book 3, Title 2, and Book 6, Title 1 of Presidential Decree Number 442, otherwise known as the Labor Code of the Philippines, as amended Senator Grace Paul. To the Committee on Labor, Employment, and Human Resources Development. 1062, an act restructuring the income tax imposed on individuals, amending Section 24A2 of the National Internal Revenue Code of 1997 as amended, and for other purposes, Senator Joel Villanueva. The Committee on Ways and Means. 1063, an act amending Sections 2 and 3 of Republic Act Number 8187, otherwise known as the Paternity Leave Act of 1995, and for other purposes, Senator Joel Villanueva. To the Committees on Labor, Employment, and Human Resources Development and Civil Service, Government Organization, and Professional Regulation. 1064, an act providing for parental leave and, for, and other benefits to workers in private and public sectors, Senator Joel Villanueva. To the Committees on Labor, Employment, and Human Resources Development, and civil service, government organization, and professional regulation. 1068, an act uh, instituting budget reform that will ensure the equitable distribution of funds for both the national and local government units for the purpose of promoting local government empowerment in order to achieve inclusive growth, appropriating funds therefore and for other purposes, Senator Joel Villanueva. To the Committee on Finance. 1066, an act prohibiting 
the sale of to tobacco products and manufacture and sale of objects in the form of cigarettes, cigars, tobacco, and similar tobacco products to minors and for other purposes, Senator Joel Villanueva. To the Committees on Health and Demography and Trade, Commerce, and Entrepreneurship. 1067. An act granting President Rodrigo Roa Duterte emergency powers to address the air traffic problem in the country and prescribing the measures necessary to carry out the objectives of the national policy, Senator Wayne Gatsalian. To the Committees on Public Services and Constitutional Amendments and Revision of Codes. 1068. An act increasing the minimum monthly pension under the social security system, amending for the purpose section 12 of Republic Act number 1161 as amended, otherwise known as the Social Security Act of 1997, Senator Soto III. To the committees and government corporations and public enterprises and labor employment and human resources development. Mr. President, to speak on a matter of public interest, may we recognize Senator Mig Zubiri. Any objection? Hearing none, Senator Zubiri is recognized to speak on a matter of public interest. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, may I just ask my staff, uh, well, I think they're ready, with the, uh, the, uh, Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I'm asking on a matter of collective and personal privilege on an issue that affects us all. I'm referring to the traffic situation in Metro Manila. Where does the traffic situation in Metro Manila stand? A quick reply would be, it is always at a standstill. Levity aside, Mr. President, we can all relate to the traffic mess in Metro Manila that we have to deal with every single day. Words are not enough to describe our frustrations, our agony, on how it increases our daily stress and how it affects our lives a bit negatively. Waze, the GPS-based navigation app, even tagged Metro Manila as having the worst traffic on earth. Still, that label pales in comparison to how Dan Brown described Manila as the gates of hell in his novel Inferno with our six-hour traffic jams, poverty, pollution, and sex trade. For the record, here are the numbers for us to better understand the gravity of the situation. There are now 2,317,204 registered vehicles in Metro Manila. This is 26% of the total registered vehicles in the country as of 2015. The vehicle density in Metro Manila is 3,643 per square kilometer, higher than Singapore at 1,360 or Tokyo at 967, or New York City at 2,504 per square kilometer. Metro Manila has a total road network of 4,755 kilometers. This road network is composed or comprised of 1,032 kilometers of national arterial and secondary roads and 3,723 kilometers of local roads. The ideal road network for our situation should be 8,000 kilometers or almost double of what we currently have. The volume of vehicles plying EDSA, one of our main thoroughfares, is 7,500 vehicles per hour in one direction or 360,000 vehicles per day in both directions. Other estimates place it as high as 520,000 vehicles a day. Compare this to the vehicle capacity of EDSA, which is only 6,000 vehicles per hour, or 280,000, uh, 88,000 per day in both directions, it is easy to see that EDSA carries vehicles way beyond its capacity every day. Of the total vehicles plying EDSA, 300,000 or 83% are private vehicles. Only 17% are public utility vehicles. For mass rail transit, the number of commuters taking the rail on a normal weekday are f the following. On LRT1, about 518,600 
commuters. And its design capacity is 560,000 per day. On LRT2, it's 212,000 daily commuters. Design capacity is 472,000 per day. And MRT Line 3, it's supposed to, have, supposed to service 570,000 commuters and its design capacity is only 350,000 per day. Of the 12 million Metro Manila population, Mr. Speak, Mr. President, 12.5 million trips are made daily, of which 17% are to and from work and 15% are to and from school. About 70% of these trips use public transport, of which 39% use jeepneys and 14% use the bus, and less than 1%, or rather less than 9%, account for the rail, rail system. This grim picture of horrendous traffic situations in Metro Manila brings me to an incident in the last Jan July 25, when the nation was aghast to witness a viral video of another road rage victim. Biker Mark Vincent Heralde was shot in close range by a Hyundai driver, Hyundai Eon driver, after a traffic altercation resulting in a fist fight. Vincent Heralde died instantly from multiple shots in his body. Another victim, Rosel Bondoc, was also hit by a stray bullet and was seriously injured. The car driver was later identified as Vaughn Martin Tanto, an inactive military reservist. Thankfully, after a few days, Mr. Tanto was arrested in Masbate and is now in jail facing charges. I could not, just, I could not rest rather, to let the issue go down as a simple traffic altercation which led to a violent death by a biker. Someone who supposedly or supposedly has a right to share the road with motorists. It cannot be just another number in the statistics of road rage incidents leading to death. There must be a deeper problem to this issue and it begs to be answered. I realized, Mr. President, that the bigger issue here is road sharing, respecting each other's right to use the road. Motorists, bikers, pedestrians, PWDs alike. It is also about discipline, sensitivity, and consideration for others. We may take to task the LTO or LTFRB, but for not educating our drivers properly and for issuing driver's licenses indiscriminately, even to psychotics and drug dependents. But that is another issue deserving another privileged speech. But really, Mr. President, how safe, walkable, bikeable are our sidewalks in Metro Manila? We see that our sidewalks, supposedly for pedestrians and PWDs, are narrow, crowded with vendors, parked vehicles, electric posts, and plant boxes. Pickpockets, snatchers, and robbers lurking for the next victims make our sidewalks unsafe for pedestrians and bikers alike. In navigating our sidewalks, locals have a term for it. Para kang nakikipagpatintero kay kamatayan kung hindi sa mga snatchers at sa mga hold -uppers. We can even make Olympic athletes for the hurdles event out of our Metro Manila pedestrians. However, Mr. President, the non-motorized transports or NMTs, users like bikers and pedestrians, are still struggling to claim their own share in road space. Thus, Mr. President, there are those who advocate for the designation of a lane in our major roads for bikers and pedestrians. This is in line with the concept of inclusive mobility. If there is inclusive growth in the country's development, then there should be inclusive mobility in transport planning. The Philippines Inclusive Mobility Network, a multi-sectoral coalition of over 20 organizations and agencies, are advocating inclusive mobility in the country, providing a, this definition, that inclusive mobility is a transport system that works for the poor and the vulnerable. To move around the city, every person should be able to carry himself 
If not all the way, then part of the way. Everyone who can must walk, bike, commute, and only as a last resort, take a car. With roads, Mr. President, becoming virtually the longest parking lots in the world, such clamor to designate a lane for bikers and pedestrians seem to be wishful thinking. We keep expanding our roads, many times even taking space from our sidewalks. The motorists, with motorists as our primary consideration, with total disregard for non-motorized transport, Mr. President. In the last APEC meeting in Manila, the Philippines was successful in pushing for the approval of the APEC transportation ministers, by the APEC transportation ministers, of a framework that will promote inclusive mobility in the region to ensure that all sectors of society have access to safe and efficient transport system. The inclusive mobility framework espoused by the Philippines is now covered, Mr. President, by the joint ministerial statement that will be the roadmap of, for the APEC to join and work on in the next two years. In the joint statement, the APEC's transport ministers endorsed the initiative to create an inclusive mobility framework for the region, Mr. President, as such would increase productivity and support acceleration of economic growth. Under the Philippines' proposal, the inclusive mobility framework means that access to safe and efficient transport shall be provided to all sectors, especially the less privileged, persons with disabilities, women, children, and the elderly. How then can we promote accessibility of our transport system for non-motorized transport or pedestrians, bikers, and even persons with disabilities? How can we transform our cities into walkable and bikeable communities that promote safer and healthier mobility for our citizens? How can we implement inclusive mobility? This brings me, Mr. President, to a business trip I had in Shanghai, China, when I saw elevated walkways interconnected to business districts, offices, and shopping malls, as you can see in the slides and the pictures. With the roads turning into total gridlock many hours of the day, I believe that the elevated walkway, and maybe I can ask my staff to just pause there an elevated walkway. This is actually in Makati, Mr. President. This scheme, our roads turn into total gridlock, Mr. President. I believe that the elevated walkway and bike lane are ripe for implementation in Metro Manila. This scheme will answer our inclusive mobility programs for the Metro and other highly urbanized cities in the country. It will promote health among our citizens and provide safer transport systems for all. For a start, Mr. President, we can put several kilometers of this along EDSA from the Ortigas Business District to Ayala in Makati. I've actually pitched this, Mr. President, to Secretary Tugade, and he uh, absolutely loves the idea, Mr. President. This is actually quicker to build than an elevated skyway. These elevated walkways, Mr. President, and bike lanes can be interconnected with existing footbridges in these commercial and business districts, providing a seamless, well-connected, and accessible transport system. These elevated walkways should be covered or roof to encourage people to use them even during the rainy season or under the midday sun. This should be well lighted at night and equipped with CCTV and roving security. This will provide our commuters with the options to use the bikes to and from their offices or schools or walk if their destination is within walking distance, especially in between work hours if one is going for a meeting then they can utilize these walkways. This will make our cities and urban areas truly walkable communities. This can even become the main transport system for metro commuters when our streets are flooded during stormy weather and monsoon rains. And I understand that the city of Manila has been constructing several foot bridges over its major intersections and commercial districts at no cost to the government. These footbridges are covered with CCTVs and provided with security guards. We also have a similar system in the Makati Central Business District in the back of Ayala Avenue along De La Rosa Street 
all the way to Greenbelt area. And you know, Mr. President, we used to have an office there and we used to walk that uh, uh, walkway, utilize that walkway all the time, rain or shine. So it goes to show that Filipinos would rather walk, similar to major um, uh, large and uh, developed nations, Mr. President, their penchant for a healthy lifestyle. What they do is they walk to work or they walk back from work. If we can widen these foot bridge, bridges rather, to accommodate bike lanes and stretch them along EDSA and other thoroughfares, we can easily have a safe and efficient alternative of transport. This is a picture of EDSA, and we can put this. This is a bit, uh, a bit larger uh, walkway. In another picture, uh, we'll show you a, what would it be on top of the, the um, uh, walkways, Mr. President. We have bike lanes going one way and another bike lane going the other way and people walking to and fro these uh, elevated sky bridges. I will not belabor the engineering design or budget for this program, Mr. President, as government agencies concerned can provide them in hearings to be conducted. But I enjoin my distinguished colleagues to also bear in mind the deb debilitating economic cost of traffic in Metro Manila, in which, or which, according to a 2012 JICA study, is about 2.4 billion pesos a day are lost by traffic in EDSA alone. Former DEDA Secretary Balikasan actually pegs it at a conservative estimate of 3 billion pesos daily in 2015. With the enormity of the traffic problem in Metro Manila, Mr. President, and in other metro areas such as Cebu and Davao, solving it would require a multi-pronged and multidisciplinary approach. Inclusive mobility through elevated walkways and bike lanes is my humble contribution to this discussion. I ask this August body to join me in requesting our executive agencies to seriously consider this approach, Mr. President. Maraming salamat at mabuhay po tayong lahat. Let's move forward to a healthier lifestyle and better mobility for our brothers. Thank you. Mr. President, uh, Senator Manny Pacquiao wishes to be recognized. Uh, Senator Pacquiao is recognized. Mr. President, if I, if my, uh, I'd like to ask uh, of my colleague from Bukidnon, you can yield some question. Uh, yes, I would, I'm very, I would be very honored, uh, Mr. President, uh, to be interpolated by my, my uh, Kababayan, my bisdak, uh, <laughs> Uxilingan sa Mindanao, Manny Pacquiao. Dilan na magbisaya kay di sila kasabot. Lagi? <laughs> Approve. <laughs> yes, uh, Your Honor, I'm, I'm very much willing to... We cannot speak bisaya, Mr. President, because... Uh, Although, Mr. President, <clears throat> we consider Cebuano as a major Philippine language. Okay, yes, why not? Yes. But uh, siguro for purposes of the others that are here that they could understand, we can yes. go into Bisaya and Tagalog and in English. Uh, yes, <laughs> go, go ahead, uh, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. President. I, uh, Mr. President, I realize that um, my colleague uh, said that the bigger issue uh, sa ating bansa ngayon is uh, road sharing, respecting each other's uh, right to use the road. And he's uh, proposing for uh, uh, space for uh, motorists, especially bikers. Bikers, yung uh, pedestrian lane. Uh, yung bikers, we know that uh, our highways uh, is not enough for the volume of uh, cars na dumadaan every day. So kung magbigay pa tayo ng, magbigay pa tayo ng uh, roadway ng, uh, ng mga bikers, yes. ay baka, baka sumikip lalo yung, uh, yung highway natin, yung mga freeway natin. Yes. Tama po siya, Mr. President. Kaya yung proposal po natin ay elevated. Um, kung, at marami po sa atin ay pumupunta po sa north of Metro Manila from the Senate. Alam niyo po uh, uh, sa ating mahal na kaibigan na dito sa EDSA from Makati, dito sa Magallanes flyover, papunta po ng, uh, ng uh, Guadalupe, wala talagang pwedeng ilagay na bike lane dyan at pedestrian lane dahil halos ganito na lang 
siguro wala pang dalawang uh, o two feet o kalahating metro ang naiwan po sa sidewalk. Yan ay pang emergencies lamang. Kaya ang proposal po namin ay gumawa ng mga steel, elevated na bakal na, na walkways and bike lanes sa tabi po ng pader na yun. Ba, siguro, ipapakita ko na lang yung drawing mamaya. Maybe we can ask uh, the staff, my staff, to go back and show the, uh, the drawings. Para pwede, sa ganun, hindi po sa gabal. Mr. Sa Manuel, pwede po ba nating malaman kung uh, ilang kilo, kilometro yung uh, uh, proposed The total kilometer of EDSA is 22 kilometers. Yeah. Yung uh, dulo sa dulo, from Monumento hanggang Taft Avenue po, ay 22 kilometers. Kung meron pong bike lane, mabilis po yung 22 kilometers kasi kung habang nag exercise nga ako dun sa stationary bike, nakaka-50 kilometers nga po ako eh. Halos wala pa siguro yan mga uh, maybe 20 minutes to 25 minutes. At marami na pong collapsible bicycles na pwedeng gawing backpack. At... Uh, Pwede pag akyat mo po dun sa elevated bike lanes, i-assemble nyo po yung iyong uh, bisikleta, gamitin nyo na po yan at uh, mabilis na po kayo makakapunta sa inyong pararatingan. Wala pang traffic. Ay, ang gagandahan po nito. Maganda po yan, Mr. President, yung proposal na yan at uh, supportado ko po yan. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat po, uh, Senator. Mr. President, uh, before I move to... Uh refer the speech of the gentleman from Bukidnon to the Committee on Public Services. May I be allowed to ask uh, a question or two, Mr. President? Mm. Absolutely. It will be, be my honor to be interpolated by the Majority Floor Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. And the birthday uh, boy, rather. Oh, thank you. Happy birthday, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. I am now 50, 18 years old. <laughs> <laughs> would like to congratulate the gentleman, Mr. President. I believe it is a well-crafted speech and very ingenious proposals, I have to say. But um, you, let President. me just speak the mind of the gentleman. Um, you see, Mr. President, I drive myself to work every day. In all days that end with the letter Y. And so uh, I know what traffic is all about. And I know the traffic in Metro Manila. As a matter of fact, I even drive all the way to Pagudpod and down to Matnog, Sorsogon, every now and then. Uh, it's a passion. Now, Mr. President, may I ask the gentleman, what would he say would be the top two factors or reasons for the horrendous traffic in Metro Manila? Number one, Mr. President, would probably be the volume of vehicles in EDSA. Uh, it's over capacity right now. It's The carrying capacity of EDSA is about 200 50,000 vehicles. Uh, right now, there's over almost close to 400,000 vehicles that fly EDSA every day. And uh, also the lack of mass transport systems uh, that are in place. That's why lahat ng tao ay nagdadala ng sasakyan kasi pumapalpak po yung MRT uh, dun sa taas. At yung buses ay siyempre, uh, they're also in the same uh, road network, Mr. President. So nadadagdagan ng talaga ang vehicle vehicles sa loob ng EDSA, Mr. President. What would be the second um, uh, reason, Mr. President? Probably undisciplined drivers. Uh, if you look at the bottlenecks, uh, undisciplined public utility hmm. drivers, yung mga buses ay nagsiksikan, dyan sa Guadalupe, nagsisiksikan po sila sa um, SM Mega Mall, nagsisiksikan po sila kahapon po. The indiscipline of our riding public as well. I do not know, uh, Mr. President, to the majority floor leader, I'm sure, since he drove yesterday. Going north po after Taft, dito sa Heritage Hotel, yung tao ay nasa gitna na po ng da daan. Punong-puno ng tao. Sabi ko, siguro dalawang libong tao nakapila doon. They're already occupying the middle of the lane. Kaya nangyari, two lanes na lang or three lanes na lang po yung EDSA papunta po ng uh, Pasay, Makati. So, again, it's, I, I, the second probably, uh, Mr. President, to our Majority Floor Leader, it probably be undisciplined or discipline. the lack of discipline. Discipline. Thank you, Mr. President. I will uh, concur with your number two. Um, as a matter of fact, it is my number two. Yes. Um, discipline. Um, uh, you, the, the area you mentioned about uh, people on the middle of the road already, is true, and that's the reason why I don't pass EDSA anymore. 
Uh, you see, my number two would be the same as yours. Because here in the Philippines, it's easy to get a license. I used to have a television program called Brigada Siete. And to prove our point then, we were able to get a license for a blind man to drive. <laughs> a license to drive for a blind man. Uh, we um, presented it on television then. So it's so easy to get a driver's license in the Philippines. You don't even have to take an exam. I would venture a guess that if all the drivers in the Philippines would be given a driver's, a, li a real driver uh, examination, much like what they have in the United States, I'm so sure that more than 50% will fail. Um, we are incorrigible, unruly, delinquent, Mr. President. Um, I think um, that sums, sums it all up as far as discipline is concerned. That would be the second major reason. The first major reason for me, Mr. President, that I'd like to add to your uh, uh, proposal so that uh, they can look into the matter, is uh, side streets of Metro Manila are almost unpassable. That's why everybody goes to EDSA. From from uh, from Jose Jocno Boulevard, Mr. President, to um, say um, Eastwood Mall or uh, uh, Rodriguez Avenue or Libis in Quezon City, Mr. President. If you pass through EDSA, it'll take you about two hours or two hours and a half because everybody passes there. But if you pass through either Puyat or Taft Avenue or uh, P. Burgos or um, uh, United Nations Avenue and take Jacinto Zamora Bridge or Lagtahan Bridge, you'll take about a little over an hour. But it could be even faster if the roads are clear. It is so unpassable that a two-lane road have a parking, sometimes a double parking, illegally parked vehicles, Mr. President. You will find illegally parked vehicles all over Metro Manila, and that is the, the number one reason. So even if we have a 360,000 volume on EDSA, if we decongest that by making sure that the roads in Metro Manila are passable and not used as a parking lot, uh, then I think uh, we will be able to add to the proposals of the gentleman, Mr. President. I'm not saying, uh, as a matter of fact, there is a, a, a bill filed by Senator Gachalian that is medyo masasabi nating medyo, um, uh, it's quite radical. No? Medyo mahira para sa ibang ibang kababayan natin, like you cannot own a car if you do not have a garage. Um, sa una, parang I'd like to uh, agree with that. But pag pinag-isipan mo mabuti, marami sa mga kababayan natin walang garahe. So, baka mahirapan. So, they'll probably go to a, a parking lot somewhere or uh, baka sa sidewalk. I think we need to study that very well. But in my, in my proposal, huwag lang magpa-park sa no parking from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. You will decongest the entire Metro Manila. Uh, so, Siguro, Mr. President, um, I hope we can add that to the uh, proposal of the gentleman, and uh, may I get the reaction of the, yes. the, the gentleman from Bukidnon, Mr. President? I agree with the, the good gentleman, uh, Mr. President, our Majority Floor Leader. As a matter of fact, that's the reason why the President has been always upset with the LTO and the LTFRB because of the, the corruption that uh, is happening there. You're correct, Mr. Mr. President, the gentleman's correct that you can actually get a license without appearing. So, if you're blind, or you have, uh, or your, you cannot drive your, your 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 persons with disabilities. You can still get a license somehow, somewhere, uh, and that is why uh, that is one of the big problems that there are undisciplined drivers on the road, uh, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. So, with that, uh, if there is no other, oh yes, uh, may we recognize Senator Antiveros is recognized for interpellation. Thank you, Mr. President and Mr. Majority Leader. Would the good yes, gentleman? Uh, from Bukidnon, I yield a few more questions about 
this very interesting uh, I, I would be honored to be interpolated by one of the beautiful members of this August Chamber. Okay, Mr. President. <laughs> uh, I was very interested, uh, Mr. President, uh, that you pointed out that a full 26.6% of the total registered vehicles in the country as of 2015 are here in Metro Manila. That's correct. Do you think that's a reasonable distribution that more than one-fourth of all registered vehicles in the Philippines should be in just one metropolis, even if it is the capital of the country, Mr. President? I guess it's also because of the number, sheer number of people who live in, the met in Metro Manila. Um, we are considered one of the largest cities in the world. We have a population of probably uh, maybe a nighttime population of 12 million, but maybe a daytime population of about 16, maybe 14 to 15, 16, I, I would guess 16 million people coming in from the provinces. Um, so uh, it would probably be safe to say it's because of the sheer number of people who do business in Metro Manila. Nonetheless, Mr. President, even if, as you said correctly, uh, we have, well, Metro Manila has one of the largest populations in the world among cities, still it's very striking, as you pointed out, that our vehicle density here, 3,643 per square kilometer, is higher than the vehicle densities in Singapore, Tokyo, yes. and New York City. At siguro naman lahat nito hindi less populous uh, yes than Metro Manila, probably more populous. So again, parang uh, masyadong mataas ang ratio ng sasakyan sa tao sa Metro Manila. Um, is that a fair observation, Mr. That's President? That's a fair observation, uh, Mr. President, um, ma'am. The reason also being is that maybe because of our kapalpakan of our mass transport system, people decide to buy cars because it's actually very affordable now to buy cars. The down payment is very low. You can buy a small a Toyota or even a Korean-made car uh, for maybe uh, a fraction of the price uh, it was before. And therefore, people, and with this odd even, uh, with rather, this uh, number coding scheme, some people now buy two cars. They buy an, an, uh, uh, two other cars so that they can actually utilize it during their coding uh, days. No? So that's what's happening. It's also a lack of transport. You know, um, allow me to just elucidate some more. My wife was my number one critic when I wrote, when we decided to present this. My wife said, no, you know, Mix, why are you talking about pedestrian lanes? You should fix the mass transport system. Actually, that is in line with the mass transport system. Nandiyan na po yung MRT. MRT. Pagandahin po natin yung MRT. We're supposed to add more coaches. We're supposed to fix the lines, make it more efficient. But at the same time, we're giving people the option to walk. Mm -hmm. Because these elevated pedestrian lanes, and I'm, I'm sure the Honorable Lady Senator would, would uh, appreciate this, you know, it only takes 13 minutes to walk from Ayala to Bundia in a nice elevated pedestrian lane. It will only take you 20 minutes to walk from Ayala to Guadalupe maybe another five to 10 minutes more to um, the Shaw Boulevard. So like in other countries, and many of us have traveled before, we really rather walk rather than take a vehicle. Uh, it can be done. If it's given an option to our, our kababayans, they'd do it. I'm sure they'd walk it for 20 minutes a day instead of staying for three hours in, in the horrendous traffic. Uh, Madam, Madam, uh, Mr. President, uh, ma'am. Uh, Mr. President, uh, as is often the case, your wife is right. Yes. Uh, <laughs> your proposals. My wife is always right. <laughs> uh, your proposals about walking uh, are in line with fixing uh, our mass transport system. And some of the recommendations uh, in that area were actually also pointed out by uh, Walden Bellio and uh, James Matthew Miraflor in a uh, Talk of the Town piece they published a few months back, specifically on the MRT problem. And I'm glad you uh, pointed out um, the mass transport system, and I'll yeah. uh, return to that uh, in, in a minute or so. Mr. President, you also pointed out that uh, Metro Manila has probably uh, a total road network of uh, almost only half of the ideal road network for our situation, 4,755 kilometers to uh, the ideal uh, 8,000 um, kilometers. So I guess you're just pointing out, uh, Mr. President, that um, in addition to 
uh, improving uh, our performance in terms of a walking population and in terms especially of fixing our mass transport system. We also need to address the capacity uh, of our road networks in yes. such a metropolis. Uh, Mr. President, you also pointed out that um, at any one time, there are 7,500 vehicles per hour on EDSA going in one direction, yes. 3,600 uh, or 360,000 vehicles per day in both directions. When actually you said the, capa the vehicle capacity of EDSA is only 6,000 vehicles per hour in one direction or 288,000 per day in both directions. So again, you're yes. giving us another statistic about the necessity to reduce the volume. Yes. Uh, vehicle yes. volume um, yes. on the roads. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, and here, uh, Mr. President, I'd like to return to your point about the mass transport system. Uh, it seems I indeed that for so long our focus has been on car ownership and not enough on public transport riders or for that matter walkers yes. uh, and bikers as you were yes. pointing out, uh, Mr. President. Uh, and interestingly, public buses pala have the lowest carbon footprint per uh, person in any city compared to private vehicle owners and riders. You said, Mr. President, that of the total vehicles flying EDSA, 83% uh, are private vehicles and only about 17% are public utility vehicles. So do you think that this is something that uh, we need to shift in yes. favor of a balance or even in favor of public utility vehicles and, of course, walkers? I agree. I, re I agree with that, uh, Mr. President, uh, Madam Senator. You know, in other countries like Singapore, it is so expensive to buy a car because there is a tax. You have to buy the permit first before you can actually buy the, the car. And that permit is not given freely. There's a quota. So for example, if there are, the population of Singapore is very small, so there's a quota for these car permits. Pag may nagbukas na quota na bago, that's the only time you can buy. You cannot go to a dealership and just say, I want to buy this car. You have to have that permit. In Hong Kong, it's the same. Uh, it's a car ownership tax, uh, which limits talaga the amount of cars on the road. Although it might sound undemocratic not to be able to buy a car, we're making it difficult. So uh, these are some of the, um, what we presented today are some of the proposals that could be done without hampering maybe the human right to buy a, a vehicle and utilize it. But you know, in London, they have a vehicle use tax. At a certain time in London, when you come in, each of the cars, every car has an RFID. And every time you go into London, that thing beeps in your car. I know this because when I went there several years ago, and under the Senate's, uh, we were, it was a special trip uh, organized by the Senate to meet with the members of Parliament in England. And I remember there was a, we had a minibus, and every time we went out of London, it would beep. And every time we'd come into London, it would beep again. And I asked, why does this beep at a certain area outside of London? And he goes, there is uh, an area right before you hit the city of London which taxes you if you enter the city of London. It's heavily taxed and you pay that. Apparently it's charged to their credit card or it's charged to them every month. So it may, naiinganyo ka, mag mass transport na lang. Take the tube, take the, I think in, the, in London it's called uh, the tube, I forget. No, it's uh, the, under, the met their underground. There's a term for it, the tube, no? And uh, you take that, and basically, because of the taxes that you pay, it's higher. So we still have to come up with maybe, uh, I wouldn't say extreme, but maybe innovative pressures to convince people not to use their cars. This picture, Madam uh, Senator, uh, Ma'am, Mr. President, this picture is an actual picture in Shanghai in their major thoroughfares. That elevated portion there is not a road network. That is a, a sky walkway. And uh, if you cover that in the Philippines and make half of that a biking lane, that would be perfect in EDSA. And we will not disrupt traffic on the lower level. So that would make them enganyo na, you know, if, you, if, if it enters pa the mall, so you can either park your car in the mall and then walk and walk to work. Maybe you can walk to the sun. It's good exercise. We join Manny Pacquiao, Senator Pacquiao, <laughs> in his exercise for his race fights. Well, Mr. President, that doesn't sound and that doesn't look undemocratic at all or violative yes. of human rights. In fact, if the policy decisions were taken and the uh, citizenry supported it, the, um, such arrangements as you are proposing, Mr. President, could enable, in fact, right to a more healthful life uh, and 
um, the, the right to livable cities, for example. Yes. Uh, Mr. President, uh, you, also, uh, you also pointed out that uh, about 70% uh, of those trips, uh, oh, sorry, you said that 17% uh, uh, of daily trips are made to and from work and 15% to and from uh, school. Um, they're not majority n uh, percentages, but they're significant yes. percentages. And uh, tama po ba, Mr. President, that these could suggest to us um, moods of vehicle sharing, like encouraging yes. carpooling for students, encouraging Absolutely. carpooling for office workers and factory workers? Absolutely, uh, Madam Senator. As a matter of fact, if the plan to push through with the odd even scheme, uh, comes out and uh, and I believe what they're going to do is when you buy a vehicle now they're not they're going to raffle your number you cannot anymore ask for an odd number or an even number it's a raffle apparently which makes it even for, I mean, uh, fair for everybody uh, in an odd even scheme we're going to have to carpool so my neighbors here in the Senate we're gonna have to talk to each other and decide to ride with each other because that's probably the best way carpooling is one of a one of the more innovative ways as a matter of fact, my son carpools every day to Savior. So he's got a group of five boys that he rides with every morning. And then, uh, Mr. President, you pointed out that 70% uh, uh, 70 per 70 of these trips to and from work, to and from school, uh, in fact, use public transport. So even though these are small percentages you pointed out, going yes. to and from school and work, but a big percentage within them use public transport. So yes. again, an incentive for us to improve our mass transport system. At baka sa mga taong ito, mga estudyante, mga uh, empleyado at uh, mga gawang ito, we can also find yes. uh, fellow advocates for the walking yes. uh, proposals that um, you have made. I just would like to commend you, Mr. President, for pointing out that a bigger issue here is road sharing yes. and that there are different modes of road sharing that uh, we can explore. Uh, Mr. President, I think one of the most uh, important concepts you shared today that I picked up was what you said, the concept of inclusive mobility. Yes. So inclusive mobility uh, in transport planning and you indeed in your uh, speech uh, defined it as a transport system that works for the poor and vulnerable uh, again major stakeholders in the mass transport system and in walking to move around the city every person should be able to carry himself if not all the way then part of the way everyone who can must walk bike commute and only as a last resort take the car so again yes. I, it shows that the definition of or the concept of inclusive mobility uh, you are promoting is really calling on all citizens, all institutions to move towards the mass transport and the personal mobility, the, the walk, the kadilakad, the walking yes. uh, part of uh, an overall transport system in cities. Uh, just second to the last point, Mr. President. Can we just add to that, Madam, yes, Madam Senator? President. Yes, you know, when I had the opportunity not to be in public service the last five years, uh, we, uh, uh, I got into business, and our, our business office was in uh, Ayala Avenue in one of the buildings there. Sa likod po niyan kasi De La Rosa, there's already an elevated walkway. Nancy's familiar with this because she's from Makati, representing Makati. That connects now all the way from Makati Med, Makati Med, all the way to Greenbelt and Glorieta. So every day we walk that. It's about maybe a kilometer walk going, a kilometer walk back. It promotes a healthy lifestyle. Pag busog ka, by the time you walk back, you've digested it. And we've done it, we do it every day. The point really is, if there is a, a way we can do it, it's a pedestrian walkway, it will be done. I mean, people will, will take it. But if you're going to make Patintero with a car, right under, there's only a gutter that you can only walk on, uh, on top of, ay talagang walang maglalakad. And they'll be forced to take their cars. I agree, Mr. President. Um, second to the last point, uh, importantly, you also pointed out that in the last APEC meeting in Manila, there, um, uh, the Philippines, in fact, was successful in pushing for the approval by the APEC transport ministers of a framework and uh, a joint ministerial statement. Yes. So I'm looking forward, Mr. President, that in this chamber, uh, in the next six years, you will, in fact, be proposing a roadmap or elements of a roadmap for the Philippines uh, part, uh, as part of that framework to work on for the next two years. Yes. So we'll I, work together on that. Yes, uh, Mr. President. Madam Senator, Mr. President. You know, I love, I love the fact that uh, the lady senator 
she, she espouses healthy lifestyle, healthy living, being not only former field health uh, uh, officer, director, but also chairman of the Committee on Health. And um, this would be just down her alley, as a matter of fact, Mr. President, because what we're trying to promote here is not an infrastructure development program, but a healthier lifestyle for Filipinos. Of course, they're going to complain. Eh, madugo dun sa EDSA dahil mabaho at polluted. But if we bring down the number of vehicles, maybe to half, and encourage them more people to walk, take the MRT and the bus, bus lanes, and we can actually convert buses into LPG, uh, LNG or electric buses, we can clean up the city of all these pollutants and it will promote a healthier lifestyle. You'll see a lot less people with diabetes and heart problems in this country. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. President, and to the gentleman Thank from Bukidnon. I look forward to our committees working together in the next Thank six you. years of our Senate, the next six years of the administration, to realize uh, this healthier lifestyle through inclusive mobility. Thank Adana you very salamat. much, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, Thank Mr. You. President, um, with the majority floor leader, may I also add an additional maybe committee for referral, if it's all right with the majority floor leader. Yes. Maybe also committee on public works, because EDSA is in the ambit of the public works department. <laughs> So maybe together with public services. That's just a suggestion, Mr. President, Mr. Uh, Majority Leader. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, um, I move that we refer the speech of the uh, gentleman from Bukidnon, Senator Sabiri, and the succeeding uh, interpolations to the Committee on Public Services and the Committee on Public Works. There is a motion to refer the speech of Senator Sabiri primarily to the Committee on Public Services and secondarily to the Committee on Public Works. Any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Mr. President, Senator Villar has a visitor. Uh, Mayor Ronaldo Goles Dumangas of Iloilo would like to welcome him to uh, the Senate. Welcome to our visitor. Mr. President, also to speak on a matter of personal and collective privilege, may we recognize Senator J.B. Ejercito. Senator Ejercito is recognized to speak on a matter of personal and collective privilege. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, it's a, uh, it's a coincidence that I'm about to deliver a privileged speech on the railway system as a solution to the traffic problem. I'd like to thank the gentleman from Bukidnon for uh, laying the situation there and uh, also providing an alternative, a good alternative for the, for the traffic situation. Mr. President, colleagues and countrymen, good afternoon. In 2013, there was a single phrase that immortalized our hellish traffic and pollution situation. That phrase was, the gates of hell that Dan Brown wrote of Manila. I remember how I felt insulted with that description of our capital. As a matter of fact, many of us took offense with that phrase that several of our officials had to be put up in arms and told off Brown about it. Unfortunately, that reference may have served as a predictive warning on our traffic situation. We have learned that in hell, there are various forms of senseless punishments and somehow we cannot help but feel the same as going around Metro Manila. It is now a, a daily struggle to go to work or school and to come back home. We dread being stuck in traffic because it feels like living in a realm of suffering wherein we are being punished for scenes we do not know of. But this, this is the new normal for us living in Metro Manila. Every day we sit in traffic for hours. Monstrous traffic jams are seen in major highways in roads such as EDSA, C5, SLEX, NLEX, and even the roads in Cebu, Davao, and other cities. Delivery trucks are visibly seen on standstill along their designated lanes, adversely affecting business and employment and disrupting the flow of cargo. Quality time with family is sacrificed as a result of long hours spent on the road. Everywhere we look, and at any time of the day, the traffic is just getting worse, and it feels like living closer at the hellish gates. Mr. President, this road congestion can be mainly attributed to the influx of brand new vehicles plying our streets. Carmageddon, as it was aptly coined by social media. According to the Chamber of Automotive Manufacturers of the Philippines, Incorporated Acampi, car sales in April 2016 reached 30,317 units, or 31% more than the car sales in May of 2015. This is a major problem. Our current infrastructure cannot cope up with the thousands of cars being added on the road every month. The Metro Manila Development Authority sites, as mentioned by Senator Zubiri, 
that EDSA only has a 6,000 vehicle capacity per direction per hour. In the latest data, EDSA presently accommodates 7,500 vehicles per direction per hour or 25% more than its capacity. Mr. President, because of the absence of a reliable mass transit system, people prefer using private vehicles to get to their destination. This compounds the traffic congestion, not just in EDSA and other major thoroughfares, but also in secondary roads. What can we do to resolve this hellish traffic congestion? The solution is to improve our mass transportation system by pursuing a modernized and efficient railway system. Mr. Gustavo Petro, the more former mayor of Bogota, Colombia, said that a developed country is not a place where the poor have cars. It's where the rich use the public transportation. This quote briefly explains our transportation goals. If we lay down the railway system, it will solve a lot of problems, not only congestion. It will spread out the development to the countryside and at the same time bring down the cost of living of employees and the cost of transport of goods. Mr. President, it is about time that we provide long-term traffic solutions and prioritize transportation projects that would occupy less space but can move more goods and more people. Traffic congestion within Metro Manila and around other hubs is already an economic hemorrhage. This, this transportation crisis should be dealt with much urgency, time, and resources as much as we deal with our other crises. Mr. President, I've been vocal in sharing my advocacy of upgrading the railways across the country, particularly of the Philippine National Railways or the PNR in the last five years. Unfortunately, the same traffic and transport concerns that we had in 2010 and when I was still a member of the House of Representatives remains unresolved up to this day. And the situation is much more aggravated. Now, traffic costs us at least not only 2.4 billion, but probably about 3 billion pesos daily. Almost every day we hear in the news interrupted Metro Rail, or MRT, the light rail transit, or PNR operations due to mechani mechanical hitches. Commuters had to endure long queues to buy their tickets and squeeze themselves in the wagons. Some trains also derailed from the MRT and PNR tracks. In several cases, train passengers had to endure the worst breakdowns and were forced to walk along the railway tracks, even at 6 a.m., Mr. President. All of these cases I cited are unacceptable. That is why I join our people in asking, when will this suffering ever end? That is why imagine my joy when President Rodrigo Roa Duterte vowed that his first big project will be the railway system. In psychology, the first step for successful problem solving is problem recognition. And this is the strength that we can draw from the new administration. President Rodrigo Duterte and Secretary Arturo Togadi's eagerness and political will to resolve the transportation crisis may be the light at the end of this tunnel that we have all been looking for. As Vice Chairperson of the Public Services Committee, Mr. President and dear colleagues, I'd like to lay down some recommendations on how to resolve the transportation crisis. One of the earliest measures I've filed in this 17th Congress is Senate Bill Number 154, which seeks to grant special powers to the President to address the, the transportation crisis. I have also filed Senate Resolution Number 63, to probe, to probe on the distressing air traffic congestion in Ninoy Aquino International Airport, which has caused inconvenience to travelers and has adversely affected tourism and huge businesses in the country. Other related measures are the PNR Modernization Act and the Train Protection Act, which I have pushed for, the, pushed for in the 16th Congress and refiled in the current Congress. Granting President Duterte emergency powers for two years is simply the tip of the iceberg. This is just to properly resolve the worsening traffic congestion. Mr. President, my bill, the Transportation Crisis Act of 2016, seeks to reform the country's transportation sector. In the long run, through a comprehensive roadmap, we shall reform national public transportation into an efficient, sustainable, safe, clean, and integrated air, land, and sea transportation system. While the administration is crafting plans to address the traffic, I urge the, the Duterte administration to start building as soon as possible infrastructures that would provide for a convenient, cost-effective, safe, and reliable transportation system 
in Metro Manila and across the nation. This can be pursued through a modernized, efficient, and integrated or seamless railway system which shall serve as the backbone of our economy. Mr. President, I believe there is no other way than the railway system that we could address the traffic congestion and hasten the movements of goods and shipments in Metro Manila to the other areas. Singapore has tried and tested the impact of investing on a modernized and efficient railway system. In a study tour in Singapore, officials of the Ministry of Transport have person personally attested to me that it is only through a good railway system that their nation was able to resolve and rise up above their transportation problems. I dream of the same for our country. Aside from rehabilitating the trains, upgrading the service and operations, fixing other infrastructures and facilities, such as elevators, escalators, and washrooms, and providing for additional wagons for the MRT, LRT, and PNR, the new administration also needs to give priority over major infrastructure projects, such as the North-South Rail Project and the Mindanao Railway Project. We already have the Japanese, Europeans, and even the Chinese as willing foreign investors and local contractors willing to start up the construction of the North-South Rail Project. Many of our Asian neighbors are also keen to invest on the Mindanao Railway. Mr. President, I trust that we are giving primacy to these projects that would surely bring in economic development since it is expe expected to lower the cost of movement of goods and to lower the cost of living not just in major cities but also to the countryside. It's about time that we distribute the concentrated economic growth across the nation, which is the vision of President Duterte. For the PNR, I am open to its temporary suspension of operations so that its train wagons and railroad trucks could finally be subjected for rehabilitation and modernization. To expedite the construction of the NSRP, I am also in favor of awarding contracts to several contractors so that simultaneous and round-the-clock work could be done by the various firm and its completion would be on at the earliest possible time. Mr. President and dear colleagues, by in investing in establishing a national railway system that would serve as our primary transportation mode, the Duterte administration would also be changing the mindset of the Filipinos and even the government about transportation. If we provide for an enticing public transport system, thousands of Filipino motorists may finally be converted into commuters. If we invest on using freight trains instead of massive trucks to transport goods and materials, the movement of goods will surely be quicker and more economical for business. Further, this will lessen the volume of trucks plying along major roads, and there will be also be less mishaps which speedy trucks are often involved. In these cases, Mr. President, we would be successful in terms of focusing on the movement of people and goods using less space. Likewise, the government ought to consider rationalizing road investments and other infrastructures, such as parking spaces and terminals. Once the railway system is integrated and efficiently working, we can again push for the establishment of public parking buildings in areas where there are nearby terminals to revive the park and ride system that we used to have. Moreover, the government could also promote other alternative modes of public transportation such as expanding and developing the current operation of metro ferries, the use of a bus rapid transit or BRT, which was first introduced in Bogota, Colombia, and according to studies, the BRT along EDSA could have as much as 1 million passengers the whole day. To complete the transportation reform, I finally urge the administration to advocate and put forward a long-term urban master plan that, could, that would intentionally transcend administrations for a minimum of 30 years. The goal is what whoever sits in Malacanang, this comprehensive blueprint would be implemented with the help, with the technical help of transport groups, interested private groups, and individuals and people's organizations. This may prove difficult, but again, it is possible if we are determined to achieve complete transportation reform. Mr. President and dear colleagues, our serious transport problems need serious solutions. It is high time that we seriously develop our mass public transportation system and address our weakness in public infrastructure. As I have registered in the past, this is probably one of the reasons why our economy has not fully taken off in spite of the improvement of ratings and good perception towards the Philippines. 
Foreign direct investments continue to shy away because of our poor infrastructure. Let me reiterate that an efficient, reliable, cost-effective, environment-friendly, and modern railway system would move people and transport goods can be the catalyst for economic growth. Definitely, the railway system will cost us a lot of money and investment, but, it, but the returns to the economy will be enormous. It will stimulate and spread out development to the countryside. The railway system will eventually become the backbone of our economy. Mr. President, we are now again being challenged to take the necessary steps to improve our quality of life. Let us grab this rare opportunity that the new administration is giving us. As servants of the people, let us not fail them in our collective march towards progress and development. Thank you very much and good afternoon. Thank you, Senator Ejercito. <coughs> Majority Leader. Senator Villanueva would like to um, Senator interpolate. Villanueva is recognized for interpolation. Thank you, Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Would the uh, distinguished uh, gentleman, our good friend, colleague, would yield to some uh, uh, very few questions, Sir Honor? Uh, my pleasure, of course, uh, for, uh, coming from the gentleman from Bulacan. Uh, at the outset, may I just uh, commend the uh, uh, initiative of uh, our dear colleague to open up our eyes in the importance not only of the transportation system of this country but uh, more importantly when it comes to uh, railways your honor uh, mr president i'd like to ask if uh, the distinguished gentleman is aware of whatever plus and advantages we will be getting if we are to pursue with these uh, emergency powers or special powers to be given to the president in order to uh, kanina nabanggit ni Senator Miggs yung mga pangangailangan no? so siguro Mr. President let's focus more on the uh, ma-expedite ba itong uh, uh, paggawa at paglikha at uh, ito pong mga binabanggit nyo dun sa ating uh, railway system and just to give uh, probably some, some, some backgrounder, yung phase one pa rin natin ng uh, ating railway system is supposed to be from Caloocan to Malolo City and then the phase two would be Malolo City to Clark. Ito po ba sa being, being the vice chair of uh, the Committee on Public Services, ito po ba may malaking magiging uh, uh, epekto dito sa pag-grant ng uh, emergency powers? Mr. Well, President. The, well, Mr. President, uh, our dear colleague, definitely, no, um, probably our the reason why uh, this representation has filed uh, a bill granting emergency powers to the President is because of our uh, situation right now. I, I think that we are already in a crisis, considering that um, I, w I do not want to use the word, but I think we are almost choking no? um, with the amount of vehicle sales no, uh, that we have about uh, roughly about 25,000 every month, Mr. President. Um, that's about 300,000 new vehicles added to our streets every year. So if we do not act right now, I, uh, I think we will be choking and we will not be moving in a few years' time. And uh, I, I could see how, uh, in two, I could remember in 2010, tra traffic was not as bad. But, you know, five years has passed. And uh, look at where we are right now. So... Uh, Mr. President, I feel that uh, I, I think that we really have to move very fast because I, that this railway system has long been has long been uh, overdue. Uh, it's long overdue, no? I uh, I think we are 10, 15 years be, or even 20 years behind. So um, I, I'm proposing, Mr. President, uh, gen uh, for the information of the gentleman from Bulacan, that in the said special powers that uh, that the president be given. The, the the authority to waive no, the general procurement the general procurement act on the condition that uh, uh, it will be FOI compliant. So all the all the transactions, all, all the projects, and everything regard, that is connected, uh, any project connected with, uh, under the emergency powers will be FOI compliant. So that will be the check and balance. And likewise, um, Mr. President, I also noticed that. In, in uh, w whenever there are big projects, no, if ever there are biddings, 
For example, there, are, there is one uh, losing bidder, they, they would just file. Some, the, more often than that, they file uh, cases in lo the lower courts and TROs or injunctions are, uh, issued. are issued. So thereby creating more, de uh, causing more delays for the project. So in these emergency powers for two years, uh, I am proposing that there will be exemption from injunction except the Supreme Court, no? so that there will still be check and balance. So that the projects, the, these uh, big, ticket, uh, big ticket projects will go on uh, smoothly because we are, as I've said, uh, Mr. President, we are already in a crisis situation right now. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I promised the majority that, that I'd be very quick. And uh, just to add to what the distinguished gentleman already mentioned, during the hearing, it was agreed upon by most, if not all, the members of the committee that it should not only be FOI uh, uh, compliant, but also fiscally, uh, they would be fiscally responsible and the details of the, the the spending uh, plan of the Department of uh, Transportation and Railways would be uh, transparent. But let me also say, Mr. President, uh, distinguished colleague, that uh, when you talk about um, uh, expediting this uh, particular uh, program when it comes to railways, you mentioned that this representation comes and hails from Bulacan. We have been waiting for this uh, for quite a long, long time. And so my next question would probably be, you being a uh, distinguished colleague, being the vice chair of the Committee on Public uh, Services, uh, would have an idea probably of the time frame as to when we would be able to, uh, to uh, pass and grant this uh, uh, part particular special powers, uh, Mr. President. Uh, the, other, the other day we had a briefing no, uh, by the, the GOCCs, no? uh, which we had a hearing uh, regarding PNR and uh, the undersecretary um, assigned for, rail, for rail, railways was there, Yusek uh, Noel Quintanar, and this question was also asked: When, uh, when they, do they expect that the first railway, the commuter line from uh, Malolo, uh, Manila to Malolos, would be completed? And uh, he said, probably in 2021. And uh, we all said that that's quite, uh, yeah, uh, that's quite a long time, no? Because um, the reason why we are granting emergency powers is that we expect it to be uh, faster. So we are hoping that in in four years' time. So. That's that's the target, probably 2020, because as you all as you know, um, uh, Mr. President, uh, General from Bulacan, it's really hard, no, because uh, you, you know right of, right of way problems and, and the others, but uh, hopefully with the uh, if we, we are able to pass the emergency powers granted to the president, we, I hope that we can uh, we can uh, expedite and uh, hopefully complete the first phase no, of the railway system or the commuter line. Manila to Malolos. And likewise, the Mindanao Railway, no? the, it will be simultaneous. They are, the, NEDA is proposing the Digos to uh, Davao Line, no? but uh, we are, uh, Senator Gordon was there. Um, we said that we should not consider only the traffic that would, uh, that would be used in the line, but you should also use, uh, we, should, we should consider the economic um, factor, no? The goods, not only the, not only the, the the commuters, but also the goods when when is, when uh, when uh, when they plan the railway. So, to answer your question again, uh, the Malolos commuter line would be about 2020 to 2021. And I think the uh, Senate President is uh, nodding his head, hearing that there would be projects and uh, programs in building railways also Mindanao. outside <laughs> the, the outskirts of Metro Manila, especially in uh, Mindanao, because uh, I I agree with the. Distinguished gentleman, Mr. President, that by doing that, we can also decongest the city by creating railways at the outskirts. Uh, companies can relocate to places like uh, uh, Visayas, Mindanao, and uh, I would again speak about Actually, Bulacan. Mr. Mr. President, uh, if, uh, with, you, with your indulgence, I think Mindanao Railway would be a priority, you know? and uh, it will start from Iligan uh, to Cagayan de Oro to Butuan up to Davao, no? that loop, no? because uh, that will be the more... Uh, more uh, uh, practical because that will be the very uh, that will be the site of the um, 
where the more the more, more of the economic uh, activity of Mindanao is uh, located is uh, located in that area. And uh, one last point, Mr. President, that I'd like to mention that with this kind of uh, programs, for example, building railways, you are also promoting um, not only economic growth in that area in particular, but also y the uh, when you talk about employment component. Yes. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if the distinguished gentleman would uh, have the data as to how many can, uh, can, can actually be employed in a, a particular project. And that's why I'd like to put on record, Mr. President, that this representation uh, fully support the uh, 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 proposals of our distinguished colleague. I agree with the uh, urban master plan. I was so happy to hear that the Department of Transportation and Railway mentioned about pursuing its, uh, I think, 30 years uh, blueprint for the transport system. And I think it's uh, about time that we take that into uh, serious consideration. Again, uh, Mr. President, thank you. Thank you, distinguished colleague. Thank you, Mr. Majority Floor Leader. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, finally, just one question from Senator De Lima. If, uh, you Senator De Lima is recognized for interpolation. Thank you, Mr. President. Just one point with the permission of the gentleman from uh, San Juan. Gadi, madam. Yes. I'm not going to dwell on the uh, proposed grant of emergency powers because that those bills are being heard by the Committee on Public Service. And personally, I do believe that there are very good and compelling reasons for the proposal to grant emergency powers because no one can deny the enormity of the traffic uh, problem, especially here in Metro Manila. Um, I understand <coughs> the gentleman from San Juan has also a bill on the rehabilitation of the Philippine National Railways, or PNR. This representation also filed a bill. Now, I, I, um, you know I'm a Bicolana. I come from Bicol, and I remember nung bata pa po ako, yun lang ang aming sinasakyan pag bumupunta po kami dito sa Manila hanggang nagkaroon nga ng highway. But kung talagang marirehabilitate ang PNR, malaking bagay po ito sa mga tao ng Bicol and uh, you know, other areas na, na madadaanan ng, ng uh, railways. Now, I, I'm, I just want to uh, be enlightened on the specific pro proposals of the gentleman from San Juan with respect to his own bill uh, calling for the rehabilitation of PNR? Um, yes, uh, Mr. President, uh, to answer the uh, lady from, uh, from the Bricol region, yes, I, 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 it's true that I have filed a, a similar bill. Um, for, it's, uh, of course, the intent is to rehabilitate um, the existing uh, railway system you know, um, because right now, uh, the, the only asset that the PNR uh, right now have, uh, has, no, the biggest asset is the right of way. No? And I hope that we can already start talking about the PNR modernization as early uh, now that we still have that right of way. No? Because if we, st we delay this any for any lo uh, much, much longer, we might not have any uh, right of way anymore because it will be infested already by uh, by inhabitants later on. So um, I um, I'm very happy that uh, the lady also filed a similar bill, uh, which is the PNR modernization. Because I'm uh, with the intent, I'm very happy to hear also that uh, um, that before no, that. Uh, the railway system was the only mode of transportation going to be called, and probably that is the reason when uh, when the railway system was neglected. I I feel that one of the reasons why provinces like uh, the Bicol, which is a very rich um, province, was left behind no, by the other provinces. It's considered one of the poorest right now. Sad to say that even if I have uh, been to Bicol and I see that there's. We, uh, in, in, we, when you talk about resources, Bicol is probably one of the richest, but because of the probably because of the proximity, because of um, because it uh, because there is no access, mod, uh, except through buses right now and trucks. Um, Bicol was left behind, so uh, I'm very excited, Mr. President and the lady, that I'm I'm very uh, eager no, to pass this PNR modernization, so that. Um, 
we can spread out the development once we are able to pass this uh, bill and modernize and finally see a modern and efficient railway system that would not only serve commuters, but I would, I'm envisioning it to be um, a, ba uh, a backbone of the economy by helping transport goods from, from the provinces. Also, Mr. President, um, the gentleman from uh, San Juan, um, you would agree with me that uh, our proposal for the rehabilitation of the PNR would entail gargantuan uh, costs. The costs would be tremendous. It would go through to uh, billions. Now, may I know whether he's also proposing that we go through the route of uh, public-private uh, partnership? Yes, Madam. Um, we, I, I'm, lo I'm looking at three um, possibilities to, to fund because, as you said, I, and I do agree, it is, uh, we would need a uh, uh, gargantuan, I would I'd call it funding for this. And, I'm, and we, we, this early, we cannot, we cannot, uh, we cannot assume that uh, this would be a money-making business. We should take, we should look at the railway system as a service. No? Yes. Even if it would cost so much, I still feel that the returns would be enormous. So I'm, uh, I'm looking at first PPP, of course, uh, public-private partner partnership or government to government. And our uh, last but not the least, which I think is the most feasible, um, a, a hybrid PPP, which is a combination of um, a PPP structure with ODA to finance a specific element of infrastructure. We would want to take advantage of the, the very cheap uh, cheap uh, interest rates uh, when we uh, when we uh, make use of the government to government scheme so it might it can be an uh, a hybrid wherein uh, um, we will com we will will make use of the as i've said earlier we can make use of the of uh, the cheap interest rates mm -hmm. that will be uh, provided when when we use of the government to government scheme but uh, but the the private partner still uh, uh, would uh, would maintain and operate no? uh, while the government still owns the 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 what they call the, the railway and the others no? or, or the or the entire corporation. So those, it can be a scheme. Those are certainly very good proposals. One final comment, still about the uh, grant of emergency powers. While I do support, in principle, the grant of emergency powers because I believe there is uh, sufficient. Uh, justification for that. It's just a matter of really getting the specifics uh, on the part of the concerned uh, agency, particularly uh, the Department of Transportation, because we need to know what specific projects are in line for the purpose of relaxing certain provisions of law, certain requirements of law, uh, for example, the requirements under the Procurement, Procurement Act we need to know the specifics because we also would want uh, to be very sure about the sufficiency or the propriety of the period, which I think per the proponents, mm. I, I, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, mm. the proposal is for either two years or three years yeah. grant of emergency powers. That is correct, uh, Mr. President. Uh, we're proposing a period of two years. Uh, that the, uh, for, the, for the emergency powers to be exercised by the President. That is all, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, distinguished lady. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the uh, speech of the gentleman be referred to the Committee on uh, uh, Public Services and Public Works. There's a motion to refer the privileged speech of Senator Hersito to the Committees on Public Services and Public Works. Any objection? There being none, the motion is approved. Thank you, Mr. President. Upon the request of Senator uh, Joel Villaneva and the concurrence of Senator Trillanes, I move that we, um, uh, Senator Villaneva be made co-author of Senate Bill 574. This is transferring the PNPA and PNTI to the Philippine National Police. The co-authorship of uh, Senator Villanueva of Senate Bill Number 574, mm -hmm. with the consent of the principal author, Senator Trillanes, is noted. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that we adjourn the session until 3 o'clock in the afternoon of Tuesday, August 30, 2016. Mr. Is there President. any objection? 
There being none, the session is adjourned until 3 o'clock in the afternoon of Tuesday, August 30, 2016.